see. Can you hear me? Is that better? Thumbs up? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Perfect. Well, thank you everybody for um, joining today. Um, my name is Sina De Leon and welcome to Parent Good. Um, <clears throat> this app is phenomenal. I mean, talk about a resource. So I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of um, something that's so needed, um, especially in today's society, uh, being able to be at home and, and get that advice that you need. So um, I'm really excited that you're here. Um, and today, um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Sina, and I am a mom of many, many kiddos. I'm a grandma. I'm a wife. Um, <clears throat> and I've been working with kids, with children and families for about 20 years now. I started, um, I started off, you know, knowing that I loved kids. So I started off uh, taking some classes at the local junior college and um, went to be a teacher's aide in a preschool and just worked my way up, um, eventually becoming a director um, of a couple different preschools here where I live um, and then a developmental specialist. Um, so I've worked in the centers. I've been a director at centers. I've worked um, in home base. I've done Head Start. Um, and before I had my twin boys eight years ago, I was doing early intervention, uh, which was probably by far the most amazing thing I've ever done. Um, uh, I got the opportunity to get training in ABA therapy. So um, I did a lot of my work with um, children with special needs. Um, and the, the reason that I love this side of things so much is because I love working with kids. I love it, love it, love it, <clears throat> but I'm getting up there in age. So 50 is like right around the corner. So now I'm like, let's do it. Let's, let's teach parents what, what I already know, what a lot of educators already know. Let's give, you know, give back to the parents so that we can set the parents up so that they can then set their kids up for success. So what better way to prepare kids um, than to prepare the parents? And, you know, I'm a big proponent for, you know, teaching somebody so that then they can go and take those tools and, you know, um, share those tools with other people. So that's, that's a little bit about me. I love what I do. Um, honestly, I'm just so grateful that we have this platform. Um, and today we're going to be talking about anger and aggression. <clears throat> and we're going to be talking about whether they're the same thing. You know, um, a lot of times, a lot of times people will just automatically assume anger and aggression are the same thing. Um, by the way, we will, um, thank you, Abigail. <laughs> I just saw that. Um, we'll definitely have um, some question and answer time at the end. I'm probably going to speak for about 30 minutes or so, and then we will open up the forum for um, question and questions and answers. So you can go ahead and feel free to um, write your questions down. Uh, we have support people on the app with us right now that, um, you know, we'll be able to keep track of your questions. Um, so please feel free to jot them down. And towards the end, I will make sure that I open it up and leave um, some time for that. So when we talk about everybody, everybody is aware of anger. Everybody is aware of anger. But are anger and aggression the same thing? And the answer is no, 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 no. Anger and aggression are not the same thing. Anger is an emotion. Anger is, you know, a feeling. We get angry. We get sad. We get disappointed. We get happy. We get jealous. 
we get proud, we get discouraged. Those are feelings. Anger is an emotion. Anger is an emotion and it's okay. It's okay to get angry. And it is so important that our kids know that it's okay to get angry. It's okay for them to know that we get angry ourselves, but it's all about what you do when you get angry. Um, So that's where it comes in where it's anger is an emotion. Aggression is a behavior. So, you know, when we have, when, when we have a little, when we have a child, uh, I love calling them kiddos. So when we have kiddos, toddlers, that's a normal phase. You know, the, the aggression part of it, it's a normal phase because when you have somebody who is learning how to talk, who might not be able to express themselves to get their, their point across, then what are they going to do? They might smack you to get your attention. So there's a certain level of, um, I guess, aggressive behaviors that um, are normal at a certain age. Um, You know, when there's, like I said, children that are having a hard time expressing themselves. So that toddler phase is kind of where we tend to see it. So um, when we look at aggression, aggression is more of the behavior side of it. You know, somebody gets mad, they have that emotion, that's okay. But when it moves to aggression and the aggression part of it is, the behavior, it's the hitting, it's the kicking, it's the spitting, it's the pushing or um, punching, throwing things, slapping. <clears throat> Those are all aggressive aggression behaviors. So you can see the difference. Anger, emotion, normal, okay. Aggression, behavior, not okay. Um, so it's important to be able to you know, understand the difference between the two. Um, A lot of times I find it very interesting. A lot of times kids will automatically think anger is not okay. Well, why do they think that? Oftentimes because there might be some aggression. Um, I see your question, Haley, so make sure you save it so that we can um, make sure that we address it at the end. But I do see you. Um, So, you know, A lot of times kiddos will think it's not even okay to get angry because sometimes with that anger comes the aggression and then you're addressing the aggression and we don't, we don't ever really sit back and address the anger. So that's what I kind of want to focus on today. I want to talk to you about ways that you can talk to your kiddos about anger, talk to them about, um, the fact that it's normal, that it's okay. Um, they have some fabulous books about feelings. Um, my favorite one, I have it right here, hands down, one of my favorite books. It's called The Way I Feel. And what's great about books nowadays is <clears throat> you can literally go on YouTube. You can go on YouTube. You can search up um, The Way I Feel, read aloud. And this book, usually it's the author or another person, will be will read the book to you so you don't even have to buy it. So, Yeah. Um, so you don't even have to buy it. I bought this one because I love it. But when we're talking to kids about feelings and emotions and, um, things like that, the, the big important thing, you know, we can sit here and read a book. Yay. Okay. Everybody, we're going to read a book. We're going to read a book on emotions and let's take scared. This book says, I'm shaking because I'm scared all alone in the dark at night. The thunder and lightning crash and roar. Hold me close and turn on the light. I'm scared. Okay, turn the page. No, don't turn the page. Ask your child. (gasps) Ask your child about their feelings. Take the opportunity to read the book. And when you read the book, stop and ask them. So the angry page says, angry is how I feel right now. I shout with a mighty roar. I mostly want to frown and growl and stomp upon the floor. That's a perfect example of feeling angry. So then you, you know, you could read the book with them, but stop at every page, ask them, Hey, do you ever feel like that? Do you ever get angry? <clears throat> and, and I'm sure they'll say, yes, yes. I actually had a talk with my boys, my twin eight year olds, because I wanted to get that child perspective so I could bring it to you. Then I asked my boys, boys, is it okay to get angry? And one of them said, yes. And the other one said, no. 
And then he changed it to yes. And I said, okay, well, can you explain that? Why is it okay to get angry? It's okay. I go, give me an example. Well, when I lose my Legos or something breaks, I get angry. Okay. And what do you do when you're angry? What can you do? I said, is it okay to throw something across the room or go and hit somebody because you're angry? No, it's not. So I asked my son and I left it open-ended. What can you do? What's something that you can do that is acceptable? And he sat and he thought and he goes, I can remember that I can just try again. I can make my Legos again. And he was right. You know, so there's so many times, you know, oftentimes that we don't really think our kids know something, but a lot of the times that they do already. So making sure that you stop, making sure that you listen, making sure that you give them time to process what you've said. Because when you, you talk to them, if you don't give them that time to process what you say and then respond, you could be cutting off and you could be missing out on a lot of cool information that your kids know that you would never even know that they know because you're too quick to fill in the blanks for them. So give them scenarios. <clears throat> I get angry when, perfect example, my son brought it up to me today. You got angry when the lady pulled out in front of you on, on the street the other day. You're right, I did. And a way that, something that's important is to acknowledge it. Let your kids know, yes, you're, you're angry. But you turn it around and you say, I'm angry, but it's what I do when I'm angry that's most important. So giving certain scenarios and techniques, coping strategies for your kiddos to use when they're angry. You know, some people will say, go and scream in a pillow, hit a pillow, have a crash corner where you can just go and jump and beat it up. That's fine and dandy. You know, that's getting it out. But at the same time, it, it is acceptable to do that. But I'm, I'm very big on, you know, what, what can you do? What are some other strategies that you can do when you're upset? Perfect example was when I was upset because the lady uh, cut me off. We try to teach our kiddos, think of something else. Maybe that lady got a call from her daughter and maybe her daughter's in the hospital. And maybe that's why she had to turn her car around really fast. So then I went from being frustrated and angry at her to being compassionate. And I felt, oh man, I hope that's not what it is. You know, um, <clears throat> So giving kids tools to use during the time that they are angry to help, you know, keep it in the acceptable arena as far as, as far as anger is concerned. Um, now, um, okay. So when, when you are responding, let's just say your child's like having a tantrum, there's a big blow up, obviously they're angry, they're upset. Let's say it's moved to aggression. Let's say, you know, baby girl went and bit sissy or, you know, slapped somebody. It's so important to take a step back and to really collect yourself, especially during times of, you know, your child um, showing signs of aggression, things like that. Because the way that you respond and the way that you um, show them how you're responding to their behavior, they're watching us. And, and you have to think of it as a teachable moment. Think of it as a moment where, man, I can tell that my kid is mad right now. But in the back of my mind, it's like, I want to address it, but I also need to have it be a teachable moment. So you need to collect yourself. You need to be calm. In a, in a situation where there's the biting <clears throat> or the hitting, you, you want to get in between the child who's doing the, the behavior and the child who's the recipient of the bite. Um, I typically will give my attention to the child who was harmed. I won't give my attention to the child who harmed the other one at that time. Um, so it's very important to, um, deal with things appropriately, you know, make sure that the child who was hit or bit, um, is taken care of. If there's a timeout, you know, that's done, um, it's, it's very important when I work with parents, I'm always repeating myself and saying Talk about things outside of the incident. When you talk about things outside of an actual incident, then during the incident, you don't have to do as much talking because when you're talking, a lot of times that's reinforcing the behavior. So you want to take a step back and you want to do things the right way. You want to make sure that you are calm. 
You want to make sure that your face isn't like, mm, what are you doing? Like, oh, and I'm good at that because I used to do that. Yeah, not a good thing. Um, I would get so frustrated, but then no. Make sure your face is relaxed. Get down on their level. When you lower yourself down to your child's level, you know, if you're up there talking to them and you're telling them, don't do da, 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 you automatically get nervous. You get, you get frightened. You get uncomfortable. So um, making sure that you lower yourself, that you, um, you lower your position. You want to make sure you lower your position. You keep your, your voice calm and you keep it in a, in a, in a calm tone. Um, you know, you, like I said, you want to make sure that it's a teachable moment. You want to, um, oftentimes you want to, um, <clears throat> introduce like an automatic calm down time, because if you sit there and try to address the root of the problem right after a blow up, you, you really aren't going to get anywhere. Um, you're upset. The child's upset. You're trying to maintain yourself. You're trying to, to remain calm. You're trying to keep yourself collected. So, you know, separating the child at that moment, um, letting them know, like, you're going to be in here. You're going to be in a calm down spot. I've literally told my kids, I'm going to my room. I'm putting myself in timeout because I need to collect myself. Role model the behavior you want to see in your child. So, you know, um, you would let them know you're, you're, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. Um, some of the strategies that I have parents implement are have um, a basket in the child's room. <clears throat> and you're not just going to put this basket in their room and assume that they know how to use everything in the basket. You're going to talk about these things outside of an incident. You're going to say, you know what? I thought of something the other day and I think that it might be really helpful for you when you get, for when you get mad or when you get frustrated because it's okay to feel that way, but we want to make sure we handle it in a way that's okay. So I'm going to put a basket in your room and this basket's going to have bubbles. This basket might have a book. It might have a little fidget toy. It might have a paper that's numbered one to 10 or 10 to one. These things are coping, coping, they're, they're reminders of the coping strategies. So if you have this little basket in their room and you let them know when you're feeling like you are just getting to your limit and, and mom says, you know, you need to go in your room, you need to calm down, you need to take some time and you go in your room and you see this basket. If you see those bubbles, I want you to remember that you can take deep breaths And you can work on calming yourself down. Take deep breaths in and deep breaths out. When you see those bubbles, that'll help you remember, what can I do when I'm mad? What can I do when I feel just so out of control? I can take deep breaths. The fidget toy, you can take and you can squish it and get your stress out, the little stress balls. Another thing is um, with the paper, you know, just a little paper that has numbers one through 10 on it. That's a reminder for them to be able to count. They can count from one up to 10, or they can count from 10 down to one. And when they do this, you're showing them all of these different things. You're teaching them coping strategies. When you get mad, stop, take a step back, go get one of those, those things in the basket or take your child in the room and say, Whew, I really need to sit down and I really need to focus and I really need to focus on my breathing. I need to help get myself calm. When you get upset and you get mad, you, your temperature goes up. Splashing cool water on your face, taking a walk, um, doing something fun and creative. Uh, we always recommend getting ahead of the incident. So it's almost like, I know this sounds bad, but it's almost like uh, emergency preparedness. That's what made me think of it when I was when I was working on this. It's like um, we need to be prepared for, uh, you know, our children's blow ups. So getting ahead of the game is important. <clears throat> and when I say that, it's like think prevention, try to get ahead of the incident, talk about it and deal with things outside of the incident. Um, give advance notice when you know your child is having a tougher day. Warnings are 
a, a godsend. 20 minutes and it's going to be time to clean up. 10 minutes and it's going to be time to clean up. Let the timer go off so that they have all that time to start preparing. Um, if you have a child that is getting angry and then becoming aggressive, then you want to reflect. You want to start to even keep a little log of what's going on. Where were you? What was going on? Were, were you at grandma's house when the blow up happened? Um, is the, are the blow ups happening more at school and not at home? Are they happening more at home than they are at school? Are they happening at the grocery store? You want to keep a, keep a mental log because if, if, if the behaviors tend to, is tending to happen in, in a certain area, you kind of, you, you want to see what could that be? Is it, is it too noisy there? Is it, um, is there a lot of things going on that the child is just overwhelmed? So you really want to just start keeping a mental note of where, where is it happening? Um, if it's happening, um, if it's happening in one place more often, so if it's happening at home more often, you know, I have a lot of parents that I work with kids, kids are great at school. Kids are fine when they're home, the blowups happen. So that's where you want to start looking at specific child, um, relationships. Are they doing more of the blowups with dad? Are they doing the more of the blowups with mom? Um, and then you can start honing in on what is it that they are, you know, becoming upset about in regards to dad. And that's where, that's where the parent good app really comes in handy because, you know, we know as professionals, we know what to look for. We know, you know, we, we can help you, you know, narrow down where the aggressive behavior is coming from, who it's directed at. How does that person play a role in, you know, um, the progression of things so it's really important, um, and I can't I can't stress it enough that if you're not sure and you um, are struggling with something like this, you need to reach out. And we have we have the um, free 15 minute consultations on the app, and you can go in and you can share. You know, this is what's going on, and it might be something where it's like, oh, okay, and it might be something that's super super simple, a change in the, in the way you're you're relating to your child, a change in the routine at home, but it's important to reach out <clears throat> so that you can have that support. You can have that follow-up. Um, it's, it's really important. You want to, you know, when you're, when you're talking to somebody, you're getting that perspective, somebody else's opinion about what's going on. It's always good to have a second set of eyes and ears um, on the situation so that you can just, you know, get another opinion. Okay. I didn't see it that way at all. You know, um, so it's, it's a good thing to be able to reach out. And, um, that's what I love about this app because, you know, um, none of us are perfect. None of us have all the answers. I, I have sessions, um, where I'm like, okay, this is not an area that I'm super confident in working. So I'll refer, um, the session out to another, um, consultant that I know is like, whoo, with that, with that, you know, topic. So, um, some of the other things is, uh, when you are, when you're dealing with a child that's acting out that, that, um, is angry, which is okay. It's an emotion, but when it moves to the aggression part of it and becomes physical, the behavior side of it, um, I recommend with parents a lot to role model, role model scenarios that you, think might happen that that have happened in the home. And for instance, I had a child who would, you know, scratch and, and slap. And it was usually during a transition. It was usually during um, having to share. So we talked about this. We actually role modeled. I'd, I had the parents role model, sit down with the kids. Dad's playing with the car. Mom's playing with... <clears throat> Um, she's playing with the baby and then sister over here is playing with another car. And then the other sister's coloring. I had mom go over and snatch the toy out of dad's hand. And the kids went, Oh, cause dad was like, Hey, I had that first. I don't like that. When you do that, I want it back, please. So dad was role modeling 
the response that's appropriate to somebody snatching something out of your hands. And the kids were like, whoa, mom just did that to dad. This is crazy. But in that, and and you're not going to sit there and tell them, we're just role modeling. So, you know, no, do these. I love doing this stuff with kids in the home because it's amazing. It's amazing to see their reactions. They are watching us. They are watching us and they're learning from us. So, you know, mom grabbed that toy and dad was like, hey, I don't like that. He didn't just go and snatch it and slap her. He used his words. He said, hey, I had that first. I want it back. And mom said, no, I want it. I had it. I want it. And dad said, my kitty's being silly. And then dad said, well, it's my turn now. You can have a turn later. And again, role modeling the response. So then mom would say, "Mm, okay, well, it's your turn now and it'll be my turn later. Okay. And she gave back the car. So you're role modeling those scenarios. So if there's a scenario in your home that you're seeing often with your kiddos and, you know, it leads to anger and then, oops, goes over to the aggression side of things, take, take the opportunity to take a mental note and, and role model a similar, similar situation at a later time. So that you can show them, give them the verbiage to use. You know, a lot of times we don't know, um, parents a lot of times don't know whether their child's a visual learner, an auditory learner, a kinesthetic learner. So, you know, we're covering the bases. We're showing them how to respond to it. We're using our words. They're seeing us. Um, So a lot of the times I encourage parents to full on role model um, how to do things. And that's why we had the mom um, we would role model or we would, um, show them how to use, um, the, the items in their room for calming down. You know, um, you show them, you don't just give them stuff and assume that they know how to use things. Um, and when you get mad, like I said, go in there and say, Oh my goodness, I think I need the bubbles. Ooh, I need bubbles. And then can you please go give me the bubbles? I need to take deep breaths. And then you, you want them to know that you get mad. You want that, and they do. And I even asked my boys, boys, how do you feel when mom when mom gets mad? How do you how do you feel when mom gets angry? We don't like it. I said, well, how do you feel? Like, what do you what is it? And they said, scared. And I said, you do you feel scared when mom gets mad? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, what do you do? And they said, we just go to our room. And that made me kind of sad because I don't want them to to be afraid, and I don't want them to. Um, I want them to know that it's okay. Um, and, and perfect, perfect example. Last night, my son got mad about something. I said, dude, you are, you're totally entitled to get mad. You're entitled to get mad. It's okay to be angry. I understand why you're angry. And I, you know, I repeated back the situation to him. And, you know, from that point, we can talk about, you know, when that happens again, you know, you can do A, B, and C. Um, hitting and things like that are not an option. Getting up and storming off into the room, that's not hurting anybody. He's mad. He's frustrated. He's upset. He's going to his room. I'm not going to stop him and say, hey, don't. what are you doing? Because at that point, you're almost making them feel bad for getting mad. Well, they didn't do anything wrong in that moment. So you, you let them know, hey, dude, I see that you're frustrated that was a really good choice to go and just step out and take a break instead of getting up and smacking your brother or throwing something. I noticed that when you got upset, you went to your room and you, you took a minute to calm down. So I'm, I'm, you know, we always want to make sure that we're praising um, and acknowledging the behavior that we want to see more of, because if you look at it from the, the reinforcement standpoint, are we reinforcing the behavior? Um, So if you see a behavior that you would like to see more of, acknowledge it. Hey, you know what? When she threw that toy at you and you didn't pick it up and throw it back at her, that was really great self-control. You, you are getting really great at that. Um, but let them know also that things are a process. I know next time you'll probably, you, you know what? That wasn't the best, but I know that the more you practice and the more you work, we get better at things. So you, you encourage them and you praise them. Um, the last thing I want to cover is um, some some things that you can do and offer. Like I said, the disaster preparedness, the temper, the the tantrum preparedness, 
you can um, get ahead of the incidents. A lot of the times um, I would like to offer like that calm down place, a place that the kiddo can knows. Like if I go here, I'm going to be left alone for a little bit. I'm going to be able to, you know, kind of work through this. Um, reading those books is another great example. Having that dialogue back and forth, showing them because not of our kiddo, not all of our kiddos are verbal yet. Showing them, be that role model. Um, some really cool things that you can offer. If I have a child that I can see is like, wh- there's just something today that is just I can see it. You can almost feel like it's it's something's coming. I I'm gonna be sure to take the opportunity to present like a um, a calming activity. Um, you can do a tote, a little small tote, and you can put like dry beans with some lavender oil in them. You can do rice in a bin with a little little toys in there. Um, some type of sensory activity a lot of times helps them to to calm themselves down. Um, teaching them little, you know, meditation things, um, focusing on certain things, you know, the focusing on something that we can hear, something that we can smell, something that we can touch. It, it's just important. It's not, it's not just important to teach them. It's okay to get upset. It's okay to have certain feelings, but we need to give them the tools. We can't assume that they know. Um, we can let them, you know, let's go on a walk. I'm like, oh, kind of feeling like this today. I'm a little bit irritated. I could just feel like I'm getting frustrated. Do you want to go on a walk with me? Sure, I'll go on a walk with you. And while you're on that walk, take the opportunity to start talking to them. Um, Be creative. Doing creative things also is is really good when it comes to, you know, feeling like you're about to lose it. Um, And then checking in, checking in with your child and talking to them. Hey, dude, how are you feeling today? I always, I like to refer to the ocean. Are you calm? Is your water calm? Or is your water boop, boop, boop? Or is your water boop? Or is your water boom, crashing today? Because if it's crashing, we got to get ahead of that. We got to figure out some ways to, you know, because it's okay to be, it's okay to feel like that. But we want to teach them how to get back to the, this because that the other one is not healthy all the time to stay there we want to teach them that's that's the big takeaway today um if you have a child who is hurting animals who is um not very remorseful if you're seeing those kinds of things um you know that lack of empathy that lack of remorse that's when you know i definitely would recommend speaking to somebody Um, That's when I would recommend reaching out to your child's pediatrician even. Um, But, you know, if it's just the other things that we talked about, reach out to somebody on the app. I love it. I I have my favorite session, I think, so far was a mom in the middle of the night. It was like it was nine o'clock my time. So she was Eastern. So it was like midnight. And, And I could tell she'd been crying and she was just like, I just needed somebody to. Oh, my gosh. By the time we were done, she was laughing. She was like at a, you know, at a better place. And it was literally a 15 minute, let's talk about this. Yeah, we can get some strategies going for you. We can help you. We can, you know, teach you so you can teach them type of thing. Um, I hope that wasn't too rambly for everybody. And um, I hope that you got some information that you haven't had before. We're going to go ahead and open it up for some questions and answers. And like I said, I'm not. I don't have all the answers, but, you know, um, if I don't, I'm sure somebody on the app does. So we can we can go from there. So does anybody have any questions? I saw a question that said, my five-year-old had a temper and is often, many times a day, aggressive, shouting, hitting, punching, hurting his baby brother or mother. What can we do? Abigail, get a session. Go on the, go on the app and request a 15-minute consultation. Um, we can determine in that 15 minutes, I like to try to get an idea of, um, when, where, how type of thing. So we can kind of narrow it down. Um, because if it's happening, like I said before, it's, if it's happening in one particular place all the time, and it's one particular person, we're going to deal with it this way. If it's all over the place, 
we've got to we've got to move in a different direction. So um, having that consultation will definitely help. We want to determine um, we call them functions of behavior. So we want to determine what the function of the behavior is, what's the reason behind the behavior. Um, and and in doing so, then we can um, put some techniques in in play um, to uh, get you, you know, at a place where you're responding appropriately um, to, you know, whatever it was, um, we can, um, definitely talk further. You know, if you, if you'd like to set up a consult, my son says, sorry, after hurting my baby, but I'm not sure he means it as he does it again later. Kids, you know, depending on how old he is, they don't really have the whole concept of what sorry means. You know, I don't, I've never been a big on making kids say sorry because it, it really, it doesn't, I, I'm not confident that they know, you know, um, he has a temper. I'm a natural redhead. So I understand tempers and it's all about role modeling. It's all about taking that step back. I had a, um, I had a family that I was working with and it was like a light bulb moment for mom when we were talking and it was like, my son does this, my son does this, my son does this, and then I go here, and then my son goes here, and then I go here. And then, so basically, they're feeding off of each other. And then we take a step back and we go, okay, so he's responding the exact same way that you're responding. So it was a, it was a big aha moment for her. And not to say that I'm bashing her because I've lived it. I, I've had the same experiences with, with my own kids where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, let me collect myself. Let's, you know, let's start over type of thing. So she really realized that a lot of the things she's seeing in her child are things that she herself is doing in response to certain behaviors. Um, and when we do that, it's just, you know, reflecting, self-reflecting, thinking about, you know, how you handled a certain situation. Um, like I said before, um, making sure that you're coming down on their level, making sure that you, are letting them know, like, you know, this is something that we all go through. Uh, my son has most of his tantrums at school. He gets aggressive. He will not physically hurt anyone, but he will throw anything in sight and will kick cabinets. Okay, so the fact that he's not hurting anyone or hitting people, that's a good thing. Um, the fact that he um, is throwing things, you know, maybe at that moment, that's how he's coping. So I would definitely role model some things that would be appropriate for him to do during those tantrums. Um, and if, you know, if the school's not willing to do that, maybe you should take the initiative at home to say, okay, buddy, when you feel like this at school and you really want to throw something, send him with a little fidget toy, send him with a fidget, something where he can just get it and just squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it and get that, get that stress out. We want to give them something that is, appropriate. So if he's not able to do this, he can do this. So you can think of something that, to offer him so that when he does feel that way, he can still release how he's feeling, but it's done in an appropriate way. Um, frustration. My daughter is extremely verbal for her age and community very well, but still resorts to violence when she gets, and how old is she? Oh, she's two. We talked about that. We talked about toddlers tend to be but you did say she's verbal. So I think at this point, role modeling at this point, role model, role model, role model, role model, role model, the behavior you want to see. Like I said, get those scenarios going. It's so it's actually really fun to have your your husband or your kids get in with you and start um, role modeling some different scenarios and then how you would respond to it. How do you suggest Helen? What's the other parent in the house that initiates? The, oh, that. Uh, initiates the aggression and the anger with our, so is it, are you saying it's physical? If it's big physical, then that's definitely a whole nother ball game that you have to um, address. If it's, if it's a parent that's becoming aggressive with a child, that that's abuse. Um, that is, that's not okay. That's not okay. Um, that's something that you have to really step back today, Carrie, and think like, if somebody's being aggressive, it's a behavior, right? So if, if the behavior is throwing something, if the behavior is um, yelling and screaming and name calling, those are all behaviors. Those are the aggression, the aggressive behaviors, but that's abuse. When that's directed towards a child, 
no, not physical, but if it's, if it's name calling, if it's, um, if it's, uh, you know, throwing things in the home, that's still, you know, those are still things that need to be addressed because, um, those are the things that can easily turn physical. So I would definitely recommend, you know, reaching out to, um, a counselor that you have, um, there, or even on the app, um, reaching out to somebody, but that to me is like a very fine line of, you know, um, actual abuse. Um, five-year-old son and his tantrums are mostly at school. Okay. <clears throat> like we talked about when we, it's a good thing to be able to narrow down where they're at. And then um, oftentimes when I'm working with parents, I will implement what we call an ABC log. And an ABC log is um, for the antecedent, the behavior, um, and then the consequence. So the antecedent, what happened before, you know, if you have a, if your little guy's at school and all of a sudden the, the tantrum starting, well, what happened five, 10 minutes before that? Oh, the school bell rang and um, the lunch bell rang and then they got on the loudspeaker and did this and then, okay. And then there was the behavior. And then after it could possibly be the jarring of the sound. We never know. So that's why it's important if you log it, if you log the behavior, you start to get a picture. Do these, do these tantrums happen when, you know, there's a transition going on? Does it happen when you know, the bell's going off? Um, I hear somebody. Do you have a question? Oh, they went mute. Does anybody else have any questions? I think the big takeaway here is, um, you know, letting your kids know that being angry is normal um, and it's okay to be angry. It's all about what you do. I feel like sometimes I'm a broken record when I, when I talk to my own kids, like it's fine to get angry, it's, but it's about what you do when you're angry. Um, and then knowing and realizing that your kids are watching you. And, you know, if there's a behavior and you, you can take a step back and be like, oh my gosh, that's something I say or do. I would like Carrie's answer for any age. <laughs> As in what to do if another adult does not model the behavior you seek for a preschooler? Well, we're only, we can only control ourselves. So if, if there's the other adult isn't role modeling, then I would make sure that I'm almost like overcompensating when I'm role modeling. And um, I would have a serious conversation with the other adult and let them know um, that our actions and our, um, things that we do have consequences, you know, and if, if they're behaving a certain way in front of their kids and then their kids are turning around and behaving the same way, you really, you really don't have to look far to find the root of it. You know, if they're seeing it, um, if they're seeing it at home, if they're seeing somebody who's getting angry, start throwing things around the house. If you see somebody, you know, if they see somebody who's angry and it moves to physical it moves to name calling, it, move, it moves to, you know, aggressive behavior, then you don't have to look far to see what's going on. Um, because kids are smart and they, um, they emulate a lot of what we do. They like to, um, you know, uh, they like to do what we do. And even when it's the bad stuff, you know, and, and a lot of times they don't, they don't do it maliciously. They don't, you know, they're just kids. Um, but, you know, it, it is, it's a very, it's, it takes a lot to just sit back and um, self reflect. And it takes a lot to say, Oh, man, I could have handled that so different. And then, you know, if your kids are a little bit older, like I have teenagers, and I'll, I'll say to them, Okay, I could have handled that a lot different. And then we go over like, how could you have handled that? I could have done, you know, A, B and C. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, um, it's, it's, it's not always about words. It's about actions. It's about taking the opportunity and being intentional about, um, how we respond to certain things, especially when we have a child that's struggling in that area. You know, if, if you're like at your rope, if you're like, you're, 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 you've had a day and you're just like, Oh, I'm going to lose it. Say it. I have had a crazy, I'm getting frustrated. Oh, this is making me so mad okay, what can I do? And talk it out loud to yourself because your kids most likely are listening. 
So if you say it and you talk about it out loud, okay, mom's mad. What is she, what is she saying? She's talking to herself. Okay. So I'm mad. I really need to take a break. I need to step away from this for a little bit. And then, you know, um, there's some very cool, um, resources on YouTube where you can even just like, they have like meditation, little, like seven minute little meditation things that you can do. Um, how to stop the aggression in the moment example, screaming and throwing stuff when upset, send her to her room to calm down. Okay. Great question. My, my professional personal opinion is you get in the middle you, you have to, uh, you know, if there's a child that's the focus of the aggression and there's the aggressor, then you need to stop, get in the middle, separate, put the child, you know, that was being, you know, targeted to the side, make sure they're safe. And then the other one, yes, needs to go um, to their to their calm down area. Um, a lot of times people call it timeout. This is how I have parents implement timeout. Um I literally have them walk through what a timeout looks like. I encourage parents to create house rules in their home. I encourage parents to sit down with their kids and say, okay, guys, I have homework. I have homework and I need your help because you're the only one that can help me with this. And they eat it up because we need them. When when we need them, they love it. They love to feel like mom needs my help. Here I come to the rescue. I'm going to help mom. So sit down and say, okay, I have homework. We have to come up with house rules. Here's our house rules. Here's our paper. You can color it. You can put stickers on it. Do whatever you want. But we have to come up with house rules. What are the rules in our house? And they might say, no hitting, no screaming, no calling names, no yelling, no biting, mm, no jumping on the couch. And you say, you know all the rules already. You're so smart. See, I knew you'd be able to help me with this. But you take it and then you write them down in a positive way. You write them down without the no. You write them down without the no, because if you take the no away and you tell them what they can do, their ears perk up. If I have somebody constantly telling me what I can't do, I'm feisty. I'm feisty. I'm like I said, I'm a natural redhead. I'm feisty. If you tell me what I can't do with all the, even with all the training I have, I am going to be like, Oh, really? I can't do. Okay. So you tell them what they can do. You say, you're right. We walk in our house. We sit on our bottoms. We use nice words. We keep our bodies to ourselves. We listen the first time. My favorite one is we eat food, not our friends. When there's biting, I say, did you think he was a cheeseburger? Because he was not, he's not a cheeseburger. We have to make sure we tell them what they can do. So if they're throwing things, they're screaming, one of the rules could be um, we listen the first time, we recognize our feelings, we go, we, we, we take the time to calm down, we, um, you can say hands are for hugging, hands are for high fives, we can do uh, walking feet in the house, screaming outside, we can scream outside, we use quiet voices inside. Um, another one was we eat at the table. So you tell them what they can do. So once you have these house rules, if you also address rules that are a non-negotiable automatic timeout, calm down place rule, if there's a biting or a hitting, you're going to let them know. You're going to say, okay, so we have our house rules now. These are going to be the rules that are a non-negotiable automatic timeout, calm down place. Whatever term you want to use, time, time out, calm down place. Um, so let's make it, let's make it. So what is it going to be? Is it going to be, if there's biting, that's automatic timeout. If there's hitting, if you're hurting someone else physically, emotionally, it's automatic timeout. And you're talking about all these things away from the incident. So when there is an incident, when there is an attack or there's a bite, You go to that child and you say, that's an automatic timeout. And you get the other child away. You take the child to their room and it's that quiet time where they're going to be by themselves. If they start, if they're throwing things in their room, and this is me, this is, this is Sina De Leon's timeout strategy. Some people could have different strategies and I've, I've shared this strategy with other parents. um, And sometimes it doesn't work. 
most of the time I've, I've gotten really, really good feedback from it because remember you're providing things in their room that they know are there so that when they're in there, you already, you've already talked about the, the bubbles. You've already talked about the fact that they can take deep breaths. You've already talked about the fact that they can go in their crash corner or read a book to help them calm down. So you can, with confidence, send them to their room. Um, and, you know, they say it's about two minutes for every year. So if it's a four-year-old, it's going to be about eight minutes, seven to eight minutes. And when you can, when that time is up and you can hear that they're, they're, calm and they're quiet for a good four to five seconds then you open the door and you say oh, sounds like you're ready to come out and you come out and you can talk about what happened then talking about it outside of the incident it's important because you know our hearts a lot of times will want to explain right then and there why they shouldn't do something why they shouldn't have thrown their shoe at their sister's face why they shouldn't have you know bit their brother but when you're talking about it within that incident you're reinforcing it technically because you're giving it attention. So you, you, and it's not that you, you know, I had a parent who was like, I'm not going to ignore something like that. It, it's not about, it, it's just all about the timing. So many parents are doing the right thing. They're talking to their kids. They're explaining things, but it's at the wrong time. You have to make sure you're doing it the right time. And that's why I always like to let people know, share things outside of the incident as in what to do if an adult does not model. Okay. We, we address that one. Um, so when you're talking about things outside of the incident, when, when there is an incident, you don't feel so, you don't feel that overwhelming urge to be like, why did you do that? You, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that. Why would you tell that your sister? Da, 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 da. You don't need to do all that. You don't need to do all that. You can do that at a different time. Um, so, you know, it's timing and that's where, you know, Kids don't come with an instruction manual. They don't come with the book, but you know, that's why, that's why the parent good is such an amazing tool because I went to school for this. You know, I know I see Elizabeth on here. Uh, I'm sure there might be some other specialists on here, but we went to school for this. Not everybody's gone to school for this. So not everybody knows, you know, the different tools and strategies to use. Um, so that's why it's, it's, it's a great thing to have the app. It's a great thing to be able to um, connect with people and say, you know, am I, am I handling this the right way? Do you recommend something different? And what's great about the app is um, I'll have sessions with parents and then I will, you know, let them know. During this week in between sessions, you can message me through the app. You can message me through the app if something happens. If, if, if you're going through something that we didn't address in our session, send me a message through the app. I'm literally answering my messages. My phone's, this, my phone's right here. So I'm literally answering my messages in the line at the grocery store. It, it literally is like answering a text message. This parent was going through this. What should I do? What's going on? Okay. I, I just really want to emphasize the fact that so many people who, you know, I do this because I love it and I'm sure, and I personally know some of the other specialists on the app and we love it. We love kids. We love helping families. We love working with children and families and we love being there to support you. So if you, you know, just reach out, you know, what's the worst that can happen? You can, you know, maybe get uh, a specialist who, who was unable to respond at that moment, you can go to the, ne the next one. Um, it's like interviewing, you know, just, you can, you can have a consultation with me. If I'm too loud, if I'm annoying, then you don't have to work with me. There's other ones, you know, um, it, it's just, you want to get that right fit. You want to get that right fit. Um, how do I put my child in timeout? If they have things in the room, creating a play zone for them, there are no others. This is the thing, Jody. That's a really good question. And at the end of the day, if you think of, if you think of the timeout as, okay, what's the purpose? The purpose is to remove the child and get them in a place where they're, they're away from whatever it was. Did they not, were they not cleaning up? Let's just say they didn't clean up their toys and you told them, you know, however many times, and now it's a timeout and they're going in their room. Okay. Well, the, the purpose of it is to remove them to have them isolated by themselves for a little bit so they can just, you know, think when that time up 
timeout is over. It doesn't really matter what they did in their room because if you have a child who's having a tantrum, if you have a child who's, you know, freaking out over something and they go in their room and they start reading a book or they start coloring or they start building something with their Legos. If you think about it, what did they do? They went from having a tantrum where they were like losing it to finding a strategy and a way to cope, finding an outlet for that. So when my kiddos have to go in a timeout in the room, I don't remove anything. If they're in there and they're, you know, playing with their Legos and, you know, it's, it's not so much about what they're doing in there. It's about that time. And then when they come out, they have to go back over to, you know, if you had asked them to clean up and they didn't, then they would need to come over and, and clean up. Um, if, if it's something where, you know, that they thoroughly are not getting anything out of it, then you might think of um, removing, you know, if you notice that they're in their room and they just time out does not matter at all to them, then you'd have to probably think of a different strategy. Timeout's not for everybody. Um, so you might have to, you know, it just depends on the age too. It could be, you know, the different types of positive and negative punishments. Again, resources on the app would, would be able to go over with that with you. You know, if you have a teenager, uh, timeout might not be the best thing, you know, taking that phone away. You can ask my kids about that. <laughs> so, um, you know, that one is, uh, you know, adding uh, writing sentences, you know, um, Let's see. I think we're almost time. Oh, he's five. Yeah, I definitely feel Jody. I would, I would do a set. I would do a consultation for sure. If you guys know anybody going through it, um, just, you know, at their wits end, send them our way. We'll take them. And like I said, if you don't like me, that's fine. You know, not everybody does. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. So, but you know, there's plenty of other specialists on the app. We cover all kinds of things. There's, there's speech pathologists on here. There are um, marriage and family therapists. There's uh, specialists that deal in co-parenting. Um, there's ones that deal with like the full on child therapy. Um, that's phenomenal. My, my big, big, big um, thing is my, my real target area right now is uh, potty training and behavior and discipline. Um, those are my like forte, I guess you could say. But um, if you have, you know, co- if you're doing co-parenting and you're just, it's a real struggle. There are people on on the app that you can, you can read their profile. On their profile, it'll, it will usually say like, I specialize in working with um, uh, co-parenting. I specialize in working with um, trauma. Uh, I'm not one of the ones that specialize in working with trauma. I'm not going to sit sit here and say, oh yeah, you know, come talk to me. I'm because that's not my area. And I would, I would be doing a disservice if I said, you know, come and talk to me about trauma, because that's not my, my area. Um, But I would definitely be able to find somebody within the app that would, would definitely be a better fit for you. And, and that's, what's great about it is we're here to support one another. So I just want to thank you again for, for being here. Um, If you have any, any questions, um, feel free to um, go on the app, feel free to share it. Um, You know, um, And I just hope that I hope that you guys got something out of today. And remember, you know, we are um, we're just our kids. Our kids look to us, you know, um, that you might not think you have all the answers, but your your child pretty much does. So um, you're very welcome. So remember, anger, a feeling, aggression, a behavior, get a book. Sit down and read with your kiddos. Talk to them. Ask them questions. Give them time to process and think. You can't just blurt stuff out. And I know because I have ADHD and I tend to do that. So I have to be very intentional. (laughs) Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Bye.